Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Patience of a Saint. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a woman narrating the peacefulness of the sea and how it feels like home for her. When she closes her eyes, she thinks she is at a beach and her mother is smiling at her. The mother starts to wade deeper and deeper into the ocean, and she gets worried. She runs to rescue her, but the lights flicker on, and it is revealed that she is trapped in a detention facility on a remote island. The woman named Lily turns out to be a prisoner and is now strapped to a chair in a dimly lit room. A doctor seated opposite her is offering to switch her death sentence to a life sentence in exchange for her signing up for some groundbreaking medical trials. He reads her file, stating that she used to be a part of the special forces and then a bodyguard for a senator who died because of her. She replies that she's seen what happens to inmates who undergo the medical trials, and she'd rather be executed than experience that. Suddenly, a crow breaks through the window and lands near Lily's feet. Guards walk in and snap the bird's neck. They then begin to escort her back to her cell. Lily walks through the facility in chains. The other inmates are all raucous, banging plates and howling. Before entering her cell, she insults the short guard, and he pushes her inside, knocking her to the floor. She meets her new cellmate, a chatty blonde woman. The cellmate is curious to know more about her and asks her about her killing the senator and how she was the patsy in the ensuing cover-up. Lily doesn't like how intrusive she is and answers that she should mind her own business. The cellmate then pulls out a blade and attacks Lily, wounding her leg. She retaliates and is able to strangle the cellmate with a piece of cloth. A few seconds later, the cellmate stops breathing, just as the same two guards from earlier come running in. The taller guard helps Lily and takes her to the infirmary. However, the beds are already full of shivering and vomiting inmates. The infirmary doctor coldly tells the guard to just put Lily back in her cell, since her execution date is soon anyway. Fortunately, the guard insists that she should be treated, and the infirmary doctor agrees, as long as he ties Lily to the bed. Lily asks the infirmary doctor if she's going to give her painkillers. The infirmary doctor laughs and tells her that she can sell the medicine for exorbitant prices on the island, so she's been hoarding them. The tall guard fiddles with the broken air conditioner, and suddenly a bunch of bugs tumble out of the opening. Suddenly, two other guards enter the infirmary with a shivering male inmate. They tell the infirmary doctor that the male inmate escaped the lab during the medical trials, but then became sick halfway across the island. They sequester the male inmate while he starts vomiting, and a sickly gray pallor tinges his skin. The cellmate, who is apparently still alive, is strapped to another bed while she hurls insults at Lily. Lily eventually drips off to sleep, and she sees flickers again of her mother at the beach. When she wakes up, she sees the male inmate seemingly well again, except that his eyes have gone completely dark and blood is streaked all over his face. He convulses again, and the infirmary doctor is completely surprised that he is still alive. She gags at the odor coming off of his body and orders a nurse to bag his body. Lily dozes off again for a while, and when she wakes, she sees the male inmate feasting on one of the other patients. She is about to scream when the tall guard places a hand at her mouth and silences her. He silently starts to wheel her bed out of the infirmary and continues to slurp blood from the patient's neck. They are halfway out the door already when another female and male starts to shriek. The male inmate notices them and starts to move with inhuman speed. The tall guard gets Lily out in time and bolts the door to the infirmary, but the male inmate breaks through and tackles the tall guard. Lily grabs his gun and shoots the head of the male inmate, finally killing him. The tall guard sets off the alarm to let the rest of the facility know that something is going on. However, the rest of the patients in the infirmary start to awaken as zombies. One of them goes after the scared doctor and kills her. The male doctor who tried to recruit Lily earlier nervously calls the warden and informs her that the whole island where the facility is located has lost contact with the mainland and they're on lockdown. He reprimands her for going too far with her medical trials and angrily asks her if she's trying to stop him from leaving. The warden hangs up and the doctor pops pills into his mouth. A Jamaican inmate, who is the de facto leader of the female prisoners, faces the guards and demands to know what is happening in the prison. Meanwhile, one of the guards starts twitching, a sign that he is also transforming into a zombie. None of the others notice this, as they're too busy threatening the Jamaican inmate with a gun to get her back inside the cell. The zombie guard starts to run towards them, but one of the other guards shoots him first. But it isn't a headshot, so he continues to rise and attacks another guard. He shrieks at the other guards and picks them off one by one. In the chaos, the Jamaican inmate manages to get a hold of a guard's gun and instructs the other inmates to go to the stairs. Lily grabs another shotgun too. However, the infection is quickly spreading now, 
and more and more guards are turning into zombies. The tall guard opens one of the gates, and Lily herds the other inmates to the exit. They lock the gate just in time before the newly transformed zombies arrive. The remaining inmates, which now include a tattooed girl, a druggie, a Hispanic woman, and a flamboyant man who escaped from the male cell block, escape to the kitchen along with a few guards, where Lily shoots the huge chef, who is also turned into a zombie. They run to the warden's office, who is appalled that they dare to break into her office. She orders the short guard to shoot the prisoners, but the inmates make it clear that they need to band together to survive. The druggie starts rifling through the warden's medicine cabinet, looking for a fix. Lily notices the medical files of the inmates on the warden's desk. It is clear that the warden should be blamed for the spreading infection in the whole facility. The security cameras also show that the doctor is trapped in one of the rooms. She is worried that the tall guard has been infected because of his encounter with the male inmate earlier, but he assures her that he feels fine. The lights flicker off, and Lily decides to locate the fuse box to get the electricity back on again. She ventures into a warren of rooms and sees the fuse box. She flips the switch back on and is shocked that several zombies are a mere breath away from her. They seem to be rendered motionless by the lights, and when they flicker off, they can move again. Lily quickly leaves. She finds the doctor hiding under the table nearby and rescues him. They go back to the warden's office, where tensions are rising between the survivors. They realize that since the dead male inmate got loose outside the facility, he must have already infected people in the surrounding town. Lily theorizes that since the zombies are afraid of light, they can just walk out of the facility in the morning. However, they don't have anywhere to go, since a boat only comes to the island once a week to deliver supplies. The tall guard suddenly bends over in pain. He is now starting his transformation. The other survivors point their guns at him, but Lily begs the doctor to save his life. There is nothing more they could do, and Lily shoots the tall guard to end his misery. They see via the security cameras that survivors from the island are banging on the door of the facility. The doctor urges the others to open the gates, but the other inmates disagree. The Jamaican inmate has a daughter who lives in town, and the warden also has a sister there. So they are going out there to save them. Lily and the doctor volunteer to help. Dawn breaks and sunlight starts to trickle in. The group reaches the gate, and the warden unlocks it. A crowd pushes its way through, and it appears that daylight does not hinder the zombies at all. So they have to get back inside the gates. They manage to save one girl before returning to the safety of the warden's office. Lily goes inside a room and quietly hums a song. The doctor finds her there and asks her how she has managed to resign herself to her fate. She tells him that it doesn't matter anymore since she is destined for death either way. The doctor sits down beside her and says that he knew the senator's wife and daughter, and he believes that the senator killed them rather than Lily. But she explains that she discovered that the senator was beating his wife and daughter, and she warned the senator not to do it again. But the senator killed them the next day. The guilt of not being able to prevent their deaths has made Lily accept her death sentence with no complaint. The short guard hatches a plan with the tattooed inmate to fix the wires so they can communicate with the mainland. He also suggests using the others for bait to distract the zombies. Meanwhile, the warden is alone in her office, reading the medical files and watching a tape of the medical trials. She gets her gun and tries to kill herself, but Lily stops her. She slumps to the floor and confesses that she just wanted to cure all diseases. She tells Lily that it's too late now because it's in all of them already, and Lily is confused about what she means. The warden also reveals that another way to get off the island is through helicopters, but they can't make the call because electricity keeps going out. Lily suggests that they use the battery of the generators, which they use for the electric chairs. She then tries to leave and get to the generators, but the warden's sister walks in. She is now a zombie, and Lily aims her gun at her. The warden tries to wrestle the gun away from her and threatens Lily that she won't call a helicopter if she shoots her sister. The Hispanic woman threatens the girl from the town with her gun, but the druggie shoots her. More and more zombies are clawing at the gates to the main room. The short guard electrocutes another guard and throws him to the zombies to distract them. While this is going on, Lily and the warden get the sister in chains and haul her to the main room. The tattooed inmate points a gun at the flamboyant man and demands that he tell her how he escaped the male cell block. The short guard and the tattooed inmate now have control of the group. But Lily disarms the tattooed inmate and sticks her in the neck with a syringe. The sister bites the short guard, and he screams in pain. He gets to the room with the generator, and the Jamaican inmate kicks him to it, and he gets electrocuted to death. The flamboyant man points them to a vent they can use to escape. But the warden won't leave her zombie sister behind, and without her, they can't call a helicopter. So the girl volunteers to go through the air vent first and scout, 
and there she discovers five zombies waiting in the room where the vent leads. The druggie volunteers to go, and a flamboyant man points her to another vent that leads to the rear corridor. After the druggie goes in, they hear growls through the vents. The group leaves. They arrive at the reception, and a flamboyant man fixes the power lines. Lily orders the warden to call the mainland for help, but instead, the warden calls for the whole island to be annihilated. Shortly after, her sister bites her, and she dies. The druggie emerges from the vents with scratches on her arm. She sees an electric chair near her. A horde of zombies arrives, and the group gets separated. The Jamaican inmate holds the door, while three of them escape. A zombie finds the flamboyant man's hiding place and kills him. The three search the jail cells for flashlights and ammunition. Lily gets attacked by her zombified cellmate, but the Jamaican inmate rescues her in time. Meanwhile, the young girl shoots a zombie behind bars, but she gets startled by the doctor and accidentally shoots him too. The Jamaican and Lily arrive shortly after, and they tug the scared girl after them. They see the druggie on the electric chair, and the Jamaican detaches her lifeless body from the contraption. The girl sees herself in the mirror slowly transforming into a zombie, and she screams out loud. The druggie, who is now a zombie, bites the Jamaican, who then hugs the girl and electrocutes the two of them. Lily makes it out and reaches the beach finally. The helicopter lands, and armed men handcuff her and put her inside while she cries. As the helicopter soars and leaves the island behind, Lily imagines she is on the beach with her mother. The movie ends with black veins creeping up on her face, and she starts to convulse, marking the beginning of her transformation. This is what the warden meant when she said that it's in all of them. The virus isn't just transferred through saliva or blood, but through the air too. Apparently, they were already dead from the beginning. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.